talks and I'm really thankful for you to be here and to help me moderate and organize this. So thank you so much. Thank you for letting Fantastic. Um, day one is almost over, but uh, we might have saved the best for last or at least last but not least. And I'm really looking forward to this keynote. Uh, it's Egor von Grajatz. He's the founder of Matterhorn Asset Management and also called Switzerland. He's, uh, his presentation is titled Banca Rota and I hope I said it properly, but uh, really looking forward to it because he's going to talk about like if, there, if there's a crash coming and to what to do is uh, his angle is wealth preservation. So I'm really looking forward to his, his commentary on what is happening in the gold space. Egon, please join me here on the podium and really looking forward to, to your remarks and commentary. Thank you so much for joining us here in Frankfurt. Okay. Right, great to be here in Frankfurt. Um, and great to see this crowd here. Anyone who's read my articles uh, or uh, watched interviews, they will know that I haven't changed my mind for the last 25 years. So if you've done that, you are not going to learn anything new today. So I can summarize it by saying that we're at the end of an era. The end of an era is going to be a lot of trouble for the world. We will have probably first hyperinflation uh, uh, and massive money printing and then a deflationary implosion. Um, and then a new era will start after that. But in, in, in between today and then, um, it's going to be some tough time. And, and uh, who, who knows when it's going to happen? Uh, the, um, as um, I said earlier in an interview today, is that the, the, uh, you use the uh, Hemingway's uh, quote, how, how do you go bankrupt first gradually and then suddenly? Um, and that's what Alistair said too, you know, it can happen overnight and it can take uh, several months or, or even years. The end of an era, and this is the end of a major cycle, it takes a long time. Normally we get these nice signs, you know, like the shoe shine boy uh, starting to give you uh, sh stock tips. Um, I had, for example, at the end of the 90s, I had a very good tip that made it very clear to me what to do. That was uh, my, my mother had a sister in, in uh, Florida, living in Florida, and, and she was in her mid-80s. Mid and she was sit, sitting in a, watching CNBC all day long and looking at the ticker. And, and my mother told me how much money she was making with the Nasdaq. You know, everything she touched went up, and it was wonderful. And now she's so successful that she, she's teaching her cleaner. She's teaching her cleaner to also to invest in shares. And I know that was the moment for me, uh, uh, Eureka, you know. <laughs> when my aunt, who didn't know anything about investing in stocks, was teaching her cleaner, we were near the, the, the bot or the end of, of, of that particular. And of course, then tech stocks went down by more than uh, 80%. So um, we haven't got that tip now. You haven't got a shoe shine boy now because we are at the end of a debt era. But anyone who doesn't, recognize uh, that banca rota, which means uh, the, 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 the system is rotten, uh, or, 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 it, or it means actually that the, the, the bench or the table is broken. That's what it means, because banca is, is bench or table. And in it, banking in the, uh, in, in the mid 1500s you know, was done in Italy on a bench, basically, or on, on a small desk. And if the, the banker there, failed uh, and on his obligations, they broke the bench. And that's where this bankrupt comes from, bankrupt, bancarota. Um, so that's a nice, nice piece of, of uh, history. And that's where we are now. That's where we are now. You, you have, um, we talked about already here, many people, you know, there were f four banks uh, around the uh, 15th of, of March. For, for any, any of you who know your, your Shakespeare, uh, the, the Ides of March, that was in the Roman calendar, mid-March, between the 13th and the 15th, uh, and uh, that's, that was a bad omen, the Ides of March, because it means mid-March, and this is when um, Caesar was uh, killed. Uh, and, and that's why you know, Shakespeare wrote about this and talked about the Ides of March. And we saw, saw it now. It's quite amazing how it coincided with the, you know, four banks going under in a matter of days. Um, and now we have another two in the last uh, a couple of weeks. The system is rotten. The financial system is not going to survive. You remember in, in um, uh, 2006, eight. Uh, there was bail-in at all the banks, and the, uh, uh, or, or bail-outs, actually. Uh, 
the banks are bailouts, which means that government, central banks paid everything. So the bankers who were rich before got even richer because they didn't have to suffer anything. Every, uh, trillions, uh, or, 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 or not trillions maybe, but, but yeah, trillions were, were printed, probably 20 trillion or so at the time, uh, and the system survived. Uh, but what we're seeing now is the beginning of the end of the financial system, in my view. And however fast it happens, there's no chance, you know, you can save little banks uh, and the FDIC, the, the Federal Deposit Insurance Organization, um, they can save small banks, but they can't save the big banks. And so then it's only a question of money printing until the money is worthless. That's why you really have to worry about your money now. You know, it's not a question of making a return, it's a question of survival. And in my view, personally, I hardly have any assets in the banking system because I think it is bankrupt. Um, and therefore, don't think about earning a lot of money uh, on your money. Think about protecting what you have because it's only by protecting it you have a, 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 a financial or economic life after today. Uh, now, the, it's, and this, of course, crashes of this magnitude, the end of eras always finish w with a, a, a debt explosion and then implosion. And that's what we are seeing now, and the explosion is still going to take uh, maybe a few years. We don't know how long, uh, but as you can see here, the debt has gone from four trillion global debt uh, in 1971. 71 is, is the obvious starting date for all, our, uh, all, all of us who understand gold, because that's when, when Nixon closed the gold window. Um, and then you know, we are over 300 trillion debt today. And what I'm putting up here is the, the potential that you know, three quadrillion means that, that the outstanding derivatives today, which are probably over two quadrillion, but we don't know what they are because what is re what, uh, we don't even know what two quadrillion means, to be honest with you. <laughs> Nobody does. But it does mean bankruptcy, that's for certain. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and that, what, what I'm saying here is that this, because you have the whole shadow banking system, we don't know the figures from that. Uh, but what it, it does mean is that banks are, central banks are likely to print money of a, magni of a hyperinflationary magnitude to try to save this until the money becomes worthless and, and, then, and then the game is over. So, so, so but, but even if we take away the derivatives uh, from this, you're still tr probably talking about 500 trillion by uh, 2030, um, and the world cannot cope with that, especially when interest rates, as Alice has said, and I agree with, interest rates are going to go up substantially, um, uh, and nobody can finance the debt outstanding when they do. Now, this this little graph here I've been showing for you know actually since since um, uh, Obama handed over to Trump, 2017. And basically, what it shows is that the the, uh, the deficit uh, for or the increase in U.S. debt for every president. So everyone loved Reagan, of course, but you know he tra trebled the, the debt from from 900 billion to 2.6 trillion. Uh, so that's three. Uh, and then over time, on average, every eight years, U.S. debt has has doubled. So that's why uh, you know in, in 17 I forecast that. It was going to go up to 40 in, in 25, and, and I think we're on our way there. And it could even be more, because I think a lot of money will be printed in the next uh, uh, few years or, or, or in the next couple of years. The, the, the problem is here that, as you see, tax revenue goes up eight times in 71, and debt goes up 35 times. How the hell do you think that the US debt is going to be repaid? Well, it won't, of course. The only way to repay it is to print more money. That's the only thing they, uh, they know. But of course, uh, as, as Einstein told us, you, you can't solve a problem by the same means that created the problem. Uh, uh, and um, that's what they are doing. That's why it will fail. So you know, the, the consequence, we're all, there are always consequences. Either the dollar goes to zero, and other currencies, of course, and then they're on their way, of, as we have already dis discussed today, or the US defaults, or both. Of course, officially, US will not default. They will just print more money. But 
that's still a technical default because if you print money which has no value, that is a default. Same with GDP. GDP is bought by printed money. So here you have since 71, uh, that uh, debt's, debt's gone from, from uh, 1.7 to uh, 90 trillion. In the US, this is US total debt. Uh, and GDP has got from one, uh, to, uh, one trend to 24. So, so debt is up 53 times and GDP 22. Again, we're just buying ourselves uh, uh, prosperity on credit. That's what the world is doing. This is not real values. When this implodes one day, you know, the debt will implode and all the asset values will implode also. You can't, have, you can't write off the debt on the one hand if you don't actually also uh, right off, the a assets have to come down because they're backing the debt. And that's what we're going to see I in the next few years, in my view. The other problem is that, so we have today a a an amount of um, central bank gold in the, roughly in the, in the thir 35 uh, uh, trillion, something like that. Uh, but the derivative, if you are looking here, the, the two trillion central bank gold, sorry, that's the total, sorry, that's, that's the total, the, the two trillion that's backing this of central bank gold is 0.016%. And how do you think that you can support the whole system with, with virtually no gold? You can't. So therefore, as Alistair also said, and, and we talked about in an interview today, gold will have to be revalued even if it only uh, you know, fractionally uh, supports the system. Now, my view has always been that central banks should not exist. Um, they are a menace to the system. They create enormous fluctuations of booms and busts rather than having nature's law you know, leveling off these excesses up and down. Uh, and you know, when supply is too high, uh, uh, then you know there'll be demand coming in because it's cheap, and then the other way around, with it, when everything is too expensive, it, it'll come down. But but here, what bankers are is that they're just putting fuel on, on the fire. That that's all they know. And then, but of course, on the other hand, you know the the the, the, the biggest central bank in the world is a private bank, as you know, owned by by, by private banks uh, or, and bankers. And of course, every banker loves a crisis. Because at the end of the day, they'll come out of it making more money. For example, in 2008, uh, most of the investment banks in America were bankrupt. Um, so I have a son-in-law who is uh, at Morgan Stanley, managing director at uh, Morgan Stanley. Um, and in 2008, Morgan Stanley was bankrupt, as were Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan. Of course, the, the people advising the Fed and the central banks are these banks. It's Jamie Dimon, you know, it's, it's Goldman Sachs, head, etc., who's changed since then. But nevertheless, so they're telling the Fed what to do. And of course, so, and as you know, when with these massive losses in the banking system, no banker was ever accused of anything. And my son-in-law, who 2009. 2008, when he was, or the Morgan Stanley was almost bankrupt and was saved, as I said, by the Fed and, and, the, and Japanese bank, he got the same bonus as the previous year. <laughs> <laughs> like all the other bankers also, of course, they were telling the system that, you know, we will lose all these guys. The fact that there were no banks to, to go to because they're all bankrupt, it didn't matter. So they kept uh, all the people and paid them more. Um, and it's a wonderful system, and this is why the, these guys smoking cigars here are having a good life. That will come to an end. Yeah, so their appetite is, is uh, massive, and because they are, they are obviously gluttonous or very greedy. This is Gargantua, uh, uh, the, who, whose appetite was also too big, uh, too, too big for the world. So the, but but the, the dilemma is that I think this is the last supper for them. I think central banks will lose control in the next crisis uh, because the, their, their methods of saving the world won't work, even with the central uh, bank digital currencies. That might have a 
temporary effect on the system, but central bank digital currencies is still paper money or, or fiat money. And therefore, it will make no difference, although they will tell us that it does. And, and at the same time, of course, the worst thing about uh, digital currencies is that they will control us. Uh, and that's going to be pretty hor horrible for us. So, you know, central bank towers, in the end, they fail. Um, they can't, they're not, can't grow to heaven. The Tower of Babel, you know, they, they built it too high and in the end, you know, God came in and said, well, that's it. Um, it's got to be destroyed uh, because it got too big. And it's the same. Here is the Bank of International Settlement in, in Basel, the, the, the central bank of, of, of all central banks. Um, and here you see the old tower um, and the new one that they're going to build. Because this is the bank where all bankers meet once a month, eat the best food that you can ever get, drink the most fantastic uh, wines, uh, and all agree on everything between them uh, and, and, and decide how, how, how they're going to uh, man manipulate the world. Now this, after us, the uh, uh, flood, après nos déluge, and uh, déluge, the flood is Sintflut uh, in German. Uh, and this is, uh, this is uh, Louis XV and, and <laughs> Madame Pompadour. <laughs> big, big, big. <laughs> because, <laughs> it, because it was, yeah, I, I had actually, in previous one, we put, it was Bernanke in there with a beard, but, but, <laughs> but we had, um, this was Madame Pompadour, when they lost, when, when, when France lost a, 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 a war against Prussia in, 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 in 17, 56, I think it was. They knew that that was the end for France, and this is what Madame Pompadour, who was the mistress of Louis XV, of course, said to him, après nous de, nous de le déluge, after us the flood. And of course, then that turned into the French Revolution as a, and the failure uh, of France. So, and that's what we're going to see now again, uh, you know, drowning in money. So I wrote an article already, 2000, I don't know, 10 or not, 8, or, about the dark years are here. Uh, and I, I think they will be. We, we, we're going to have some tough times in the world, very difficult times. And of course, as always happens at the end of an era, um, it gets worse by the actions of the governments or central bankers. Or you know, the, the, the sanctions, for example, that US imposed on the West and all Western countries. I mean, that is criminal what they've done. And it's absolutely incredible that countries like Germany, France, the UK, etc., that they all agree to these sanctions because they're shooting themselves in the foot or even worse, in the head. Uh, <laughs> it's killing Germany, therefore it's killing Europe um, and it's going to kill the system. Okay, we could say that it was going to happen anyway, so actually these actions fit into the, the pattern of that. You know, the worst that could happen will happen because we are at the end of an era. And of course, the, the Europe and Europe, we're, at, we're at the end of a cultural era, an economic era also, which means that the, the, uh, you, the West will fall. And, and again, as, as uh, you know, we talked about, and Alistair also talked about, you know, the power is going to gradually move across to the East, South and East, uh, to the commodity-based countries. Um, uh, how long that will take, we don't know. Obviously, it's a gradual process, uh, uh, and uh, it will take some time. But nevertheless, we know that the, the Western system is finished, sadly. And, uh, you know, the, in, in our, our children or grandchildren, no, not children, grand, my, in my case, grandchildren or, or their children, they, they, will have, uh, they, will be, uh, they will be au pairs in China. Instead. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's how the t world turns. Uh, so we have these, all these strong organizations, the BRICS, the SEO, the um, Shanghai Corporation Organization, etc. That, that you know, they're going to take over the power because they're all they're all asset based or manufacturing based. Um, and those currencies, whether, whether they will be gold backed totally or supported by gold, we don't know. But they, as Alistair Gantz said, and I agree with those figures, that both, both China and Russia have a lot more gold than they are declaring. 
whilst the US probably don't even have half of it, or nor does Germany probably, because half of Germany's gold is still abroad. <laughs> And you know that when they tried to repatriate, uh, getting down to 50%, they, they were told that they had to wait a few years because there wasn't any gold there to deliver. <laughs> and I don't think the central bank, I don't think the Fed has anywhere near the 8,000. They've lent it to the market. And it's now in China or in India. It's not here anymore, sadly. Now, this question is, how long does it take to, take to fill a stadium, football stadium, with water if you have one drop per ma minute and then increase it to two, two drops, four drops, double it every time? So how long does it take? One month, uh, one year, one day? No, it takes 50 minutes. It takes 50 minutes by one, first one drop and they double it, two, four, etc. It takes 50 minutes. And after 45 minutes, the pool is in 75, or the stadium is in 75, 90% full. It's 7% full, full after 45 minutes. The final five minutes goes from 7 to 100. And this, ex this explains uh, manipul oh, no, speculation, hyperinflation, uh, and, and um, you know, the, the, how quickly things can go in the end. And, if you, you, and uh, you can explain the same with population. I think we are at a population bubble also, like all other bubbles. Population has gone from 1 billion in 1850 to, to 8 billion today. Yes. Um, and that, you know, if you look at any curve of a bigger sample, like we're talking about here from, from, from what, eight, ten, uh, and, you know, order from 10,000 BC, any, any curve that goes exponential at the end never ever just stops and, and goes up again. Not of, it always crashes. It might not crash from here, it could be from a bit higher. It will crash, and it will, in my view, crash at least by 50%. So we, will go, we are going to see, for whatever reason, a reduction in world population in the next 50 or 75 years or whatever. Um, whether that's going to be economics or famine or war, <coughs> dis disease, we don't know. And it could be a combination of all of that, but it's going to happen. That's absolutely certain. In my view, I have to add that. <laughs> um, this is another way of uh, expressing uh, mis uh, misery. The, this was the Flemish artist Bruegel who uh, painted this in, in uh, late 1600s. And this was, you could say, it, depict, it depicts, the, the, for example, the, the Black Death in, in Europe in, in the, in the mid-1300s when European population went down to half and probably the rest of the world also. We don't have figures of that, but probably went down as much as 50%, even the rest of the world. Uh, horrible, horrible prospects, but so, that is a possibility. Now here, showing a one way of what happens in an inflationary period. So you had uh, gold at 170 marks 1919, it went up to quickly to January 23 to 370,000. And then you see in tw uh, uh, and then in 23, then went from from uh, 370 thousand at the beginning to 87 trillion. And this is exactly this is exactly like the stadium. This is this exponential effect of the, in, in the last the last moments uh, of a big move. <laughs> yeah. So this, this yeah. So this is wonderful. This is this is, is from Zimbabwe. You know. <laughs> you know. No carbon, no cl cl no Zimbabwe dollars <laughs> in the toilet. This was yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I went to um, um, a year and a half ago. I went to a restaurant in um, in uh, uh, Ticino, Tessin, which is uh, where uh, Lugano is, Italian part of Switzerland. And, and the restaurant owner came up. Well, I was with some friends and, and, and uh, my wife, and, and then the restaurant owner came up. I know this guy. He said, "I know you." I said. I said, well, well, how do you know me? I know you're the gold guy, I said. And he told the other guests, listen to this guy, I said. Because he was from Yugoslavia, and he'd experienced the hyperinflation in Yugoslavia in the 1990s. And he's, all his friends, all his relatives, all their money was destroy, were destroyed. He had gold. So he, he survived, and he came to Switzerland and bought a restaurant. But 
Do you think that any of my friends who didn't own gold then still, still own gold? No, of course they don't. No normal, and they, they had money to invest, but no normal investor buys gold. I told everybody at my daughter's wedding uh, in 2002, when gold was $300, that this is the best tip of your life, buy gold, I said. <laughs> 150 guests, nobody bought gold, of course. <laughs> It's sad, it's going to come, but too late. Um, a, a, another a graph showing just uh, the bubble, the, the bubble we're in, you know, home prices going up dramatically, uh, um, well above inflation, uh, and so that's another bu bubble. Now this is, this is um, this similar graph to what Alice has showed, which is the 10-year the uh, US Treasury, and of course you remember the uh, Volcker Top there uh, uh, when he came in um, in 1980. The, I lived in the UK in the 70s and my first mortgage uh, was in 73 um, and in 74 the UK had high inflation early on already. 74 I paid 21% on my mortgage. 21% for a period. And uh, my wife you know, said, are we going to make it? Yeah, yeah. Well, we did, because we didn't have the leverage that people have today. Uh, and we were already used to higher interest rates. So this was tough. But we did, you know, today, when people have borrowed at 1% everywhere, in mortgages, and all of a sudden goes up to 5 now, or 6 in many countries, people are not going to afford this. You add the energy price and everything else, that, that, that normal people are not going to, to afford it. And my, in my view, we, we are, uh, rates have turned. There's no question about it. Um, and for many reasons, Alistair ex explained also with the, the whole banking situation, that you know, they actually need to charge higher rates to uh, attract mo money, uh, and uh, also they're going to have a, lo a lot of bad debts. But the, the, in, in, but central banks are going to lose control of interest rates. And in my view, one of the big reasons for rates going up to maybe 15, 20% again is that there'll be massive sell-off in debt. Sovereign and, and, and also private debt. And that sell-off is going to drive interest rates higher. And, and again, central banks will lose control totally. And of course, that's untenable for the world with the debt growing as it is. That's why we're going to see the collapse. Now, like many uh, people who are interested in gold uh, for, for different, for long-term wealth preservation reasons, I mean, I'm, I'm against a lot of the things that are happening in the world today, and I have no belief whatsoever in glo global warning being caused by, by a man. Um, and I'm showing here a 10,000-year-old graph of, of climate uh, or average temperatures in the northern hemisphere, and you can see we've had cold period here. And even you take, you take, is there? A, no, I don't know. You see, you see the Roman uh, Roman climate optimum. For example, in Rome, uh, around the uh, birth of Christ, it was where the weather was tropical. It was tropical, you know. So we've had this, uh, and I I haven't seen in any picture any cars uh, f from uh, Rome. <laughs> 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 or, or plane. So, uh, the, 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 so I think they have, they've got it wrong, sadly, uh, the, the climate. So I believe that climate cycles are cycles uh, uh, and that we can't do anything about and, and the human impact is marginal at best on this. Um, and of course, this hysteria with stop oil, you know, the, in the UK where I spent some time because I live there, uh, you know, that people glue themselves to the road, uh, 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 stop the traffic for a whole day or two or three, paralyze the economy, uh, you know, they should be shot. <laughs> and, and, you know, they should just saw them away from, from or cut them off. Or the, we cannot live without fossil fuels. I know I'm not very politically correct, but, but you know, I, <laughs> I believe it. And uh, if somebody is a... Be believes in the climate system being caused by man, then of course I apologize to you, but, but I, I, was, I have strong views on this. So this is um, 
tells you that, well, fossil fuels are 83% today, uh, that's the blue section here, that's only going to come down sli slightly. And you look at uh, renewables, 6% is also increasing very, very slowly. But the big problem, uh, and then you have um, um, nuclear and hydro, which, which uh, clearly um, is also very limited. And you know what, what, we'll come to that later, but what countries are doing now, st trying to stop oil, stop coal, the world cannot function, the world will collapse anything, the hiss I hold here, this, 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 you can't make it uh, with wind power, because you can't even store the wind power. The, the, uh, and sure, battery technology will improve, but it, that takes a long, long time. In the meantime, we, the world will collapse without fossil fuels. Maybe in 100 years' time, but this is a 50-year, or, or uh, 2050, or mid-century, mid roughly, this projection. The other problem we have in the world is that we actually reached uh, peak oil from the, point of view, from the point of view of producing it at, at an um, acceptable cost, because the cost of producing oil uh, uh, and, and, and uh, burning fossil fuels is going to increase dramatically. Um, and therefore, <clears throat> there will be a fall in energy in total in the world. Precious metals are very dependent on energy. And that will be another reason why precious metal mining stocks uh, hopefully will go up as long as they can cover their costs. But you pro some of you have seen that. Barracks, for example, of $1,700 cost. So the costs are going up dramatically, uh, uh, but that's what we have to pay for now. But the, there's no chance whatsoever, in my view, uh, to see, uh, to see uh, fossil fuels uh, being replaced in the, in the next 50 years uh, by any other fuel. If, if it does, the world will collapse, which it might do anyway, as I've said before. So sadly, Germany had a, a, a leader who didn't understand any of this. And you're shutting down nuclear and shutting down coal which is the energy that is needed in Germany for Germany to function. Oh, that's a disaster. Um, and, and therefore, it's obviously going to affect all of Europe. And it's affecting the US also. They never, when they started the sanctions, they never, thought, they never thought it would affect them. Of course, it does. And then you have you know, the biggest energy, the biggest energy reserves in the world, or, or resource reserves in the world, where is that? In Russia. They got 85 trillion dollars uh, of uh, reserves in resources. So yeah, that's where the energy is, and that's why one day China and, uh, and Russia, Russia and the East, of course, will take over, which is not going to be a good prospect for us either, yeah. sadly. So, you know, leaders don't understand there are consequences of all the actions uh, and, and so many actions are taking without thinking about consequences, like this guy here who's trying to <laughs> kick. <laughs> um, so, th so we have all of these incredible uh, potential triggers for, the, for this explosion. Uh, you know, obviously the debts, um, central banks, digital currencies, which is going to fail in the end, although they will still in, uh, implement it, and then trade wars. You know, in Roman times, the Romans acquired big parts of Europe, parts of, of Asia, parts of North uh, Africa, but there was always free trade, always free trade. That's what keeps the world moving. And, and, and what the West has done, and, and of course, uh, the, uh, Europe is just a little poodle, a lapdog, to the US, and US decides everything, and everybody follows, e even Germany, sadly, uh, which is, uh, used to be a big, powerful nation. Um, and therefore, you know, these, these are some of the things that will make the system explode. Of course, there are interesting things here also, like uranium or commodities, or, but you will have a commodity boom. Of course we will have, and that's why we'll have this move to the east and to the south. Today, still, everybody lives under uh, the impression that Mark is always, uh, you know, it's only correction. What's going to happen now? It's only correction. Uh, and of course, central, <laughs> central banks have spoiled them. Uh, uh, because so far, you know, I've been, in my working life, I've been through the 73 4 collapse, uh, 
uh, the 87 collapse of, of markets, uh, and then of course the Nasdaq one, and then 2008 one. Uh, and every time, and this is why you see money printing and credit going straight up, the, uh, the world has been saved by, by f fake money. It, it's worked for a while until somebody will say, you know, the emperor is naked. There is actually, in the, there's no real money in the system at all. And, and that's going to happen. So, now, George Bernard Shaw, Pygmalion, Pygmalion was my fair lady, of course, a uh, 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 famous author. You have to choose between trusting to the natural stability of gold and the natural stability of the honesty and intelligence of the members of the government. And with due respect to these gentlemen, I advise you, as long as the capitalist system lasts, to vote for gold. <laughs> well, we know that gold is the only money that has ever survived in history. Every currency has gone to zero. So it, it, it's so easy, but every, every era, people be, believe it's different today. It isn't. So there are three kinds of money. You have 100 trillion Zimbabwe dollars. You have 100, gra <laughs> you have 100 grams of gold, and you have 100 dollars. Now, the um, uh, 19, uh, 1970, until 1971, you could buy uh, three ounces of gold for 100 dollars. Sorry, oh yeah, three ounces, 100 grams is three ounces, roughly, for 100 dollars. Today, you buy a little corner of this uh, gold, gold bar here. That's what's happening to our money. And here you see what $1,000 bought. In, four, in 1913, it bought 48 ounces of gold. Uh, and today, it buys half an ounce of gold. You know, so. In, 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 19, um, in the 1920s, uh, gold was about uh, tw what, twenty dollars sixty-seven, twenty-one dollars per ounce. This is an ounce of gold, a Br British sovereign. You want it? <laughs> you can have a look. That's one ounce. That's real money. Most people don't have, haven't ever seen it, and, and if, if you go to the street and sell it for, to somebody for 10, 10 euros, he will take it. <laughs> uh, you know, you see, this is destruction. It's obvious, um, and um, that's why gold is so important. So I know I'm running late. Luckily, I'm the last speaker, so I, um, and, uh, until, you, until you throw me out, I will stand here. It's almost finished, anyway. So gold in, uh, you know, you look here. This is an annual, you, uh, this is me uh, being the gold bug here. Uh, I'm, I'm not the gold bug. Gold is just the best protection against the consequences we have in the world. That's all. Not, not, not in love with gold in itself, but, but gold is the only thing that will protect you financially. There are lots of other things. So, you know, you look at gold in dollars is up seven times this century. And, and in euros, it's almost up eight times, not quite. What is interesting here is gold is in an ongoing bull market, has been throughout history. Remember that. When people say gold is so volatile, you know, it always goes. Look at this. In euros, gold has only gone down one year since 2000, and that's in 2013. One year. Look at that. And then there's a couple of sideways years here. But it shows you this is an incredibly strong gold market, uh, uh, bull market in gold, uh, and it's going to continue um, because we're not talking why we sh should turn this chart upside down, and I'm doing it here. Um, this is the matter one, if you didn't know, uh, the, uh, which is the name of our company. Here you have gold in $71, $35, and then you have now. So I have to look at the screen because they cover the bottom here. Uh, and now it's uh, obviously down to, uh, to, go, uh, the, the, it's down to 2,000. And you know, this is the only way to look at it. It's the only look at it. It's the fall of the currencies. You're not going to, you know, it's not a question of gold going up. Gold doesn't go up. It just maintains its value. It's, it's, it, it's eternal mon money, constant purchasing power. And it's nature's money. It's the only, that's why it's the only money that has survived. 
It's actually nature made it for us. Not some central bank and not some king, but actually nature. And, and this is why, um, that's why you get no return on gold either, because why do you have to have a return on something that, that's your own asset and, and, and nobody else's liability? Now, quickly, the, the well, uh, I, you see this long Maginot, Maginot line. This was, was what French built against the Germans during the, the well, they built it in the 30s for, for another attack from Germany. Because the, the, um, it, it, it didn't break for many years. In the end, of course, it did break, just like the Germans went around into Belgium and there was no Maginot line in Belgium. So they walked into uh, to France uh, via uh, Belgium. So I forecast a, a few weeks before that that was going to happen. And, and the same with the second one here. That's that, uh, that has broken. We are actually... Gold fell before I started to talk, by the way. I want to point that out because uh, gold, gold is uh, almost down to 2,000 when I started talking. Uh, so it, it wasn't during my speech. I don't want to say that. So that you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but then we have another. This is another consolidation for another move up or, or turn it around for another move down in the currency. So that's what we're talking about. We never worried about gold price ever uh, because uh, we know it can only go one way because currencies can only go one way. The silver, that, this is quickly, this is a silver chart uh, on, on a logarithmic scale. Silver is, is as I said, is, is gold on stills. It's much more speculative, more dangerous. You shouldn't have too much of it, but it's likely to move exponentially. So a small part, either in silver mining stocks or, or, or in silver itself, is right now a good investment in my view. It's not wealth preservation as gold, but it's a good investment. Um, so, uh, because, but you have to remember that gold goes down as fast as it goes up. So, uh, silver goes up, uh, down as far as it goes up. So, therefore, you've got to be careful. It's not, it's not as we say, you know, say in, Eng in English, for widows and orphans. It, it's not. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, have some silver. Uh, this is, this is my tip of the day. <laughs> um, I normally don't uh, you know, tell people to buy something, but th this is worth having. So, company. Well, I started in '99, and we're uh, we are the we're only into wealth preservation, not into speculation. Only into physical gold owned by the clients directly. Um, and uh, as I said, since we started, we never worried about the gold price. Our investors uh, are, are the kind, or the people we help because they hold it in their own name. Uh, they are people who buy and hold. They don't sell gold. They don't speculate in it. Thank you very much. Um, it's been a pleasure. I'm so sorry that I uh, it was too long. But, uh, uh, so I, I, I guess there'll be no time for questions. <laughs> we, we can make time for a couple of questions if, if we want. Anybody can go home if they want, by the way. <laughs> the question is, do we have any questions in the audience for Egon? We don't. I, I've got oh, oh, Dominic, yeah, go ahead, please. Um, you, you mentioned uh, uh, the selling pressure that you see coming in debt. But why will there be forced selling of debt when most of it's owned by central banks anyway? No, that's it. not true. I think it, no, 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 that's not true. Um, uh, central bank debt, is not, you know, if you talk about 300 trillion of global debt, plus the derivatives that... I was thinking uh, specifically about sovereign debt. Yeah, yeah, sovereign. But, it, but it's, you know, there's the, a so sovereign total. What's so, total sovereign debt? 80, 80 trillion, something like that, isn't it? Uh, out of 300 trillion. But, yeah, but that sovereign debt is owned by investors, not, not, by, not by the sovereigns, of course. Uh, a lot of it's owned by central, central banks. They printed the money and bought their own debt with it. Well, uh, Japan did... But the majority of it is not owned by central banks at this point. But the new debt that they will issue because of the problems we will have in the system, they will have to buy a lot of their own debt. I agree with the future. But right now, it's not the majority is owned by, by institutional investors, basically. Fantastic. I think we have time for one more question for Egon, if we have any. Otherwise, Thank you so much. Thank you. It was Thank a pleasure you. having you. Thank, Thank you so much for coming. Really, really appreciate it.